Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a teleportation effect. Ooh, mysterious and wizard-like. So to do this, I've created a new kind of uh, minion here. He's like a wizard. See, he's got like a wizard cape. And also we've got this dude, he's holding like a shield, so he's like a shield wall kind of character. But anyway, what I'm going to have here is any amount of minions on the screen. And if I click one of them, you can see it's got a selection around them, just like that. And if I hold shift, I can select multiple minions, just like that. And if I click anywhere on the game world, it goes away. Now these things here, these are walls. We want to make sure that we can teleport our minion anywhere on the map without him going through a wall. So if I click a minion, this is construction worker for example, and I right click anywhere else on this map, he fades out and he teleports fading in, turning a random direction. See? Look at that. Pretty awesome. And I can teleport multiple minions. Oh, they will be teleported to the same location, but you know, it's just to show that I can select many of them. So let's move them over here. There they go, they are together, let's spread them out a bit, just like that. And now if I click a minion, maybe a wizard, and I right-click on a wall, see, nothing happens. I'm clicking on walls, but because these are solid, it knows that it can't teleport there. That's not allowed. So if I click, see, even if I'm right next to a wall, it recognizes that he is too wide to be placed there. So if I put him here in the middle, bam, there he goes. See, it makes sure that wherever I want to teleport him, there must be enough space. And it's got the fade out and then the fade in, and also once I teleport him, he's no longer selected. So if I right click or click or do anything, no one's being teleported because they're not selected. So I'm going to go into the code here and show you exactly what you've got to do to add this to your game. So let's do this. Let's jump right into the code. So this is the project file. If I go into sprites, you can see I've got the selector and the magician and the shield wall and the worker and the wall and everything. So all these sprites are all ready for us to use right there. And if we carry on down, I have two objects, object minion, which has nothing in it at present, and object wall. You can see that the wall is solid. Also, another thing to take note of is these sprites have a rectangular collision checking. So that'll just make sure that they don't collide with the walls when we want to teleport them. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to jump right into the minion, and I'm going to show you what we need to do to make this little bugger teleport where we want. So firstly, we're going to have to have a create event. Open up a create event, drag in some code over here. We're going to need a, well, several variables to handle his teleportation. Firstly, we want to give him a sprite image because uh, I'm just going to have one minion type and then they're just going to randomly select their sprite image. So uh, sprite index equals choose. And here we're going to say sprite magician or sprite shield wall or sprite worker, just like that. Okay, so now that the player has a sprite, we can continue with the rest. So we, firstly, we're going to say teleporting equals false. He's not teleporting when we start. Also, we can use the teleporting variable to stop him from doing other things while he's busy doing that transition. Also, fade out equals false. We're going to use this to fade in and out. So when he's supposed to teleport, he fades out, it moves him, and then he fades in. So his elf is going to be changing using this fade out variable. Then also because we want to have that whole selection going, we're going to have a variable called selected, and we're going to set it to false. So no one's selected when we start, so they're all false. Then when we click one of these creatures, it's going to have that selected ring floating around them. So I'm just going to create a variable called angle set to zero, and that's going to hangle, handle that spinning thing, just make it look all exciting. So now that that's all sorted, we can jump into how the selected variable changes. So if we create a left pressed event right over here, drag in some code, and here we're going to say, make this bigger, if, taking into account if the shift key is held down, we can select more of these things. So if uh, not keyboard, I'm going to put a not over here. Keyboard check, VK shift, over there. Ooh, that's not how you spell keyboard check. Is that all good? Yes. So if we're not holding down the shift key, then with object minion, we can see this width is going to be going through all instances of object minion. That's going to say selected equals false. Otherwise, selected equals true. And this has actually got to go here. Okay, so we want to have two, you know, uh, options here. If we're holding down the shift key, then we want 
multiple instances of object minion to be selected so that we can teleport all of them at the same time. But if the shift key is not selected, it means that we are selecting a new minion and we want to deselect all the other minions. So if yeah, so if it's not held down with all minions that are currently available, set them to select equals false so they're not selected. Then after they're all not selected, select this one, this was this minion that we're working with that we've clicked on, then he is only selected, so his selection equals true. Okay, so that's how we handle who exactly we are clicking on. All right. Next, let's also handle what happens when we click randomly in some open space. We want to deselect all the minions. So that is a global left pressed. So we're global. We're going left pressed right over there. Put in some code. Here we're going to say if not precision meeting. You know, so if there's nothing there uh, where the mouse X and mouse Y are, and here we're going to say object minion. I'll just drag that over there. Uh, what's going on? Not one of these. Then just over here we say selected equals false. So if we're selecting in some open space, then you know this global minion is no longer selected. So just like that, that's pretty simple. Right, so now we're going to be jumping right into teleportation. So firstly we're going to have a global right event. Okay, so this is clicking anywhere on the, the game world. So it's a global right button uh, right over there. Drag in some code. Here we're going to say if selected. I'll bring this over here into, into view. If selected equals true. So if the minion is selected. Give us some space. Here we're going to say if place free. Very important. We want to make sure that there are no solid walls in between, uh, you know, where this mouse is, is clicking. So those are our coordinates, mouse X and mouse Y. So it's going to check that uh, to make sure that, that there's no walls at this position. So if it's free, then if here we're going to say, if we're currently not teleporting, whoops, yeah, teleporting equals false. So if we're not teleporting, then we're going to say xx equals mouse x, yy equals mouse y, teleporting equals true. So now we are teleporting because we don't want this instance to be able to teleport while it's teleporting, you know, so we can't change its uh, direction. And also it's fading out, so our fade out variable is now true. So then we've set up all those variables. So I can close this, close this off. Run through it again. If uh, this minion is selected, and if where we click is free, so there's no solid objects there like walls, then if we are not teleporting currently, then create a variable called xx, and give it the mouse x's coordinate, create a yy, give it the mouse y's coordinate, set this minion to now be teleporting, so we'll never be able to change his teleportation again. Also, fade him out, and then automatically this will uh, also run this code here of the global left pressed um, so then he won't be selected anymore. Alright, so he's fading out at this point, so now we've got to handle that. This is all handled in the step event, right over here. Okay, so in the step event, oh wow, that's a giant code editor right there. There we go. In the step event, first we're going to be checking if he's teleporting, then we're going to check if it's in or out, and all that kind of stuff. So, if teleporting equals true, Need a lot of code here. If we are fading out, right? Then selected equals false. Just want to make sure that we are no longer selected. If our image alpha is greater than zero, okay. So if we are not you know, invisible, then image alpha, here we're going to say, yeah, minus equals 0 0.05. So, you know, every every step it's going to be decreasing by 0 0.05, and then eventually when it's zero, so it's invisible, then it's going to be teleporting to that position, you know, so it's like a fade out, move, and then we're going to handle the fade in right over there. Otherwise, okay, so at this point, if it is invisible now, so it's decreased its image alpha all the way to zero, then here we're going to say randomize, 
because I want to randomize the, the seed to the randomized generator, random number generator. We're going to say x equals xx, y equals yy. So that's, we're grabbing those xx and yy variables. Image angle equals uh, random 360. We're just going to give it a random direction. And fade out equals false. So at this point, we have finished fading out. Right? We have moved to the other position, but we're still invisible. So now we need to fade in. You know, from being visible back to fully opaque. So that's the fade out equals true piece of code. So if we close that off now, we are done that. We're going to put a, an else over here. So now we are no longer fading out, but we are fading in right over here. Now we are saying, well, if our image alpha is less than one, so if it's zero, you know, between one and zero, so which means we're kind of transparent or we're completely invisible, then it means we are fading in, obviously. So we're going to do some stuff here. We're going to say image alpha plus equals 0 0.05 because we want it to come into existence in the same kind of, you know, uh, rate as it went out of existence. So it's very smooth and consistent. So there we go. We're coming in back into fully opaqueness at 0 0.05 every step. Then here we're going to say else, just like that. So now here we are saying, well, if we are at 1, so we are fully opaque, you know, the player can see us completely. Teleporting obviously equals false. We are finished teleporting. Fade out equals true again. So it's resetting this minion back to his previous state before he was selected, before he teleported, before anything. Which means that when he's selected to be teleporting again, he will automatically fade out and run these lines of code. And the process continues over and over. So we're just resetting him to his previous state. Then obviously we want to handle that uh, spinning selector just to make it look cool. So we're going to say here if selected equals true, I've got to do the double equals just like that. Then mm, angle plus plus. If you're using GM8, use plus equals one over there instead of plus plus. So we've got angle with plus plus. So now the only thing we're ready to do here is really go into the draw event. But firstly, I want to go through all this again. So we've selected the player. We've you know detected the global right click and we're now teleporting so in the step it says if we are teleporting now we need to determine if we are fading in or fading out of this teleportation sequence in this case if we are fading out so before we've moved to our new point if we have been selected that's a big thing then if image angle uh, image alpha sorry is greater than zero so if it's any anywhere between 0 0.1 and you know one zero so, opaqueness then we're decreasing it, so we're going from opaque to transparent. Otherwise, if we've reached invisibility, we're going to randomize the seed to the random number generator just so that we can give it a random image angle when it spawns again. We are setting its x and y to that of the location that we right-clicked at where we wanted to teleport. And we are fading out, setting fade out to false, which means we've now completed the fade out sequence. Then, if we get over here, it says, well, if fade out equals false after we've done all this. Then we are checking if its image alpha is less than 1. So if we're invisible, we're not exactly fully opaque, you know, the player can still see through us. It means that our image alpha should increase until it gets to 1. Once it gets to 1, it means that teleportation is now complete, the, this player can get selected again, and we've reset its fade out variable to true, which means if it is selected to be teleported again, it's going to fade out first before it fades in. And just for fun here, we've got select equals true, and that image angle of that uh, select will rotate. So now I'm going to go into a draw event. Over here, dragging some code. We're just going to say, oh, again, this is so massive. Make it smaller. We're going to say if selected equals true, we're going to draw sprite. Extended, and I believe it's the sprite selector. There it is. Sub image 0, x, y, we're going to put it on the player. Scale, just say 1, 1, rotation, angle, uh, color C white. Alpha, let's make this 0 0.7. That should be fun. Okay, that's all good. And then lastly, we're going to draw self because we want the selector to be under the player. So you draw it in order, you know, things drawn first will be under things drawn last. So that's why we're drawing the selector first and the player, well, the minion on top of that. So that's everything right there in a nutshell. One quick run through. We are giving it a few variables on create. 
um, selecting a sprite for itself it's not teleporting on create it's not fading out and it's selected equals false just like that and the angle of that spinning thing is zero I think this should be true actually yeah it needs to fade out first so that's true set that to true okay then we're detecting the left pressed when the player clicks on minion if we're not holding shift so we're not clicking multiple minions then they're all not selected and then just this one is selected just like that then we're going to head into global left pressed so this is when we you know press on any white space as I'm going to call it just any open spot that has doesn't have a minion so here it's saying well if position meeting mouse x mouse y and object minion so if not so if this position where the mouse is is not and a minion, then it's not selected. So it's going to deselect it. All right. Then the right button, this handles the actual place we're going to teleport. Notice it's a global right button. So it's if we right click on any open space in the game, here it's going to say if we are selected, if the place we have clicked is free of solids, and if we're not currently teleporting, then create two variables, x, x, and y, y, set them to the mouse, x, and y. Now tell this minion that he is teleporting, and fade out equals true again, right over there. So just to double check, make sure that it is fading out first. So now that we've told this minion what to do and where to go, if we go into our step event, right over here, we're going to see if it's teleporting, and if it is, we check if it's fading out or fading in. If it's fading out, and it's then it's selected equals false. We're going to keep decreasing its image alpha until it's completely invisible. When it is completely invisible, then we're going to send it to that location right over here. And then we are going to set fade out equals false, which is going to go into this else, the next step that it runs. As long as its image alpha is less than one, so it's transparent, we want to make it opaque at this point. We're increasing its image alpha by a factor of 0 0.05 every step. Then when it hits one, so it's completely opaque at this point, teleporting is false, no longer teleporting. Fade out is now true, which means when we want it to teleport again, it's going to fade out. And then right here at the bottom, we are just doing that animation right over there. Then in the draw, just over here, we are first drawing that little rotation selection circle and then we're drawing ourselves so if we go into play oh, quickly let's go to the room I've just got some minions around there I've got their default set to this construction worker I'm gonna put a few of them out and yeah so if we go into play it should run exactly the same as before as the preview we've got all kinds of types we click someone if we hold shift it should select multiple if we click global left press anywhere else yeah, deselect them. Click Magician and tell him to teleport onto solids. Yes, he's not going to teleport onto solids. Teleport him into a free space. Bam, he's gone. There he is. Done. Teleport multiple individuals. There they go. See? Look at that. There we go. Very, very cool. Just like that. We can teleport as many different ones as we want at any one time. Look at that. Each one handles its own teleportation. That's quite fun. There we go. So we click him, we right click somewhere, he's going to fade out, and he teleports and fades in. It's pretty awesome. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. I do look forward to all your feedback and your suggestions. They're really helping me out, making this channel pretty awesome for everyone. You can find the downloadable project files for Game Maker Studio as well as Game Maker 8. No one's getting left out in this tutorial. Right in the description. Download those, fill around with them, play around. If you have any questions on how this can be done and how I can maybe help you put this into your own game, put it in the in the comment section. Uh, I can help you out there. If you're feeling generous, please feel free to check out my Patreon campaign. Raise some money. We can make this channel better. Get to the giveaways. Maybe, you know, spice things up a bit. If you don't know what Patreon is all about, check out my Hello World video where I explain exactly what I hope to do in the future and how you can make a difference. As always, thanks for watching. Happy coding. And I'll see you guys next time for another great game tutorial.